Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have John Ragsdale on the line, and he's the president and founder over and co-founder over at TAP Innovations. And uh, John, is this is a very special reunion 2020 episode, so this is John's second time on the, on the show. And uh, welcome to the show, John. Welcome back. Awesome, Adam. Great to be here. appreciate you uh, inviting me back. Man, it's been so much fun having the old podcast family and the podcast pals back on. And uh, I was really excited when I saw your proposed um, your proposed topic today. So handling and managing entrepreneurial business growth as a corporate executive, uh, you are the guy that I'd want to talk to about that. So um, I want to get into it. But before we do, I don't want to assume that all of our new listeners caught your first episode. Uh, so let's just kick it off by you telling us a little bit more about what you're doing over at TAP Innovations, please. Excellent. TAP Innovations is a SaaS technology and staff solutions provider. Uh, our tagline is that we look for manual efforts and spreadsheets. And if you think about that acronym that spells M-E-S-S -S or MESS, so we look for messes that grow or come out of uh, gaps in between core business systems. Um, so we don't replace the core business systems, but we blend in between, we integrate with, and we make those core systems better. So again, we look for messes, manual efforts and spreadsheets, and we replace those messes with uh, SaaS technology and staff solutions. Where do you find, um, well, well, I'll start off with this one. Um, so what, what are the right types of, um, of clients, niches, or sizes of companies that are right for TAP, uh, TAP innovations typically? We typically focus on the small uh, to medium businesses, the SMB market. Um, they're typically underserved with technology, uh, not familiar with how to uh, to really leverage technology to uh, to advance their uh, their businesses and grow their markets. So that's where we typically focus. We've built a, a pre or we have a pre built foundation, so it's affordable, um, and so uh, that's really where we target. We we can bring some really amazing technology. Uh, to help them win and grow their markets. So um, I think that's a great, uh, great transition. Let's get into it. So um, today's topic, so managing entrepreneurial business growth um, for corporate executives. I mean, it ties hand in hand with what you're doing over at TAP. Um, tell, uh, where do you want to start with this one? Yeah, I'll start first. Yeah, I'll tell you just a tad bit of background about myself. So I've, I've been in IT about 25, 26 years. I've been a CIO here the last uh, 10 or 11 years. So I've been in corporate America, been in healthcare, in a couple of different industries. I've been with small companies. I've been with large companies. So I've been a, a corporate executive for a while. I developed this solution, this idea for, for TAP um, as a CIO, and I actually built it for myself a couple of times and then finally decided to uh, build this as, an, uh, as a company and, and provide these uh, solutions and services to other companies. Um, but it's really tough to, to get out on your own um, as a corporate executive if you've built a family and a lifestyle and all those things. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, this was in late 17 and 18. We built the software, still a CIO, so I had to figure out a way to <clears throat> partner with someone who could you know, help build the software, yet do it cost effectively. We leveraged some uh, global resources and, uh, that uh, from our experience in the past went full-time uh, in, in business this past year, um, in uh, 2019, uh, we had built a, a, you know, up to a point where things were moving in the right direction, had a few beta customers, but I really needed uh, to, to go full-time. So I took six months off of my career and really sat and figured out the marketing and sales patterns, right? Figured out our sales process and, you know, as I was mentioned to you before, who are we selling to? What are we going to sell? And really, that was uh, transformational um, to, to get TAP off the ground. Um, we had a really successful fourth quarter. Now, it took some time in the third quarter and, and, and into the fourth quarter, but really had a successful fourth quarter. The challenge was 
um, one quarter does does not make a, a business pattern right. There was just you know not enough quite there yet to support my lifestyle. So I was at a, a, a you know at a juncture of okay, what do I do right? Mm-hmm. How do I how do I keep this going um, and survive at the same time? And so um, I had to find another job, another role, and I had to find additional resources to help tap continue to grow. And uh, and so I spent. November, December, and January really focused in that area, and and you know I'll share with you that I was successful really with both of those. I found a, mm-hmm. a new CIO role that uh, that I'm happy with, and uh, I found a, a, a GM, a general manager, and a VP of sales for TAP that we could afford, um, and they started in early January. So I've spent you know after hours and weekends working to get them up to speed. Um, and they're not going to be to the level that I was. Right, uh, you know, the founder of the company is obviously going to be your best marketing and sales uh, person, but but they're 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 really turning the corner, um, and uh, and again, I like my new role, and, and it's a balance. Uh, there's a lot of plates in the air, but um, but super excited about uh, what's come out of the last four or five months. Man, that is exciting, and that statement that you said is so interesting um, about uh, having the place in the air and thinking about, um, you know, having kind of balancing and moving your business forward, moving your career forward, moving all these things forward. I mean, I feel like that is the real um, challenge and the real place of a corporate executive now. Like, I feel like that's kind of the new norm. Like, you, you kind of have to do all these things. Um, I mean, that's just been my impression. That's, by the way, my, 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 my situation is pretty similar. I mean, I, I, and when I went full time as an entrepreneur and when I started my business, like all these other things, like all the challenges, I feel like that's, that's part of the deal, huh? It is pretty common. In fact, I didn't realize how common it was until I jumped into that same uh, boat, if you will. And, and I heard that same message that you just said, hey, you know what? It's pre- become pretty commonplace. I'll say especially mm-hmm. in the world of these, of uh, technology executives, it's almost expected, right, um, to mm-hmm. have, you know, some, some entrepreneurial flavor or some, some expertise in that area. So uh, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. It is challenging and, and, and it's time consuming. I think you've got to find the right people um, mm-hmm. and that's important. And, and I've really drawn from my past experience. In fact, my GM uh, is someone who worked for me uh, a year or so ago, and uh, we've kept that relationship up, and, and uh, he was excited about what I was doing. So if you can, you know, bring in resources that you've worked with in the past and that you know and understand and they know and understand you, that can be really helpful too. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about, so I, I, I get that part of the journey, and I want to talk a little, uh, to me, it's kind of like the perfect storm. It's, uh, I guess you could say like this. So for, you know, TAP, obviously, you're helping small business owners, you're helping them with their IT, you're helping them with all these things in terms of scaling otherwise, and it's like that that's your product, and now you get to also use the product yourself as the company as you do it yourself, right? <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> I think I think it's awesome because you have a different flavor, different foresight as you start growing the business. So, what kind of ways do you see, like as you go forward, as you start adding, you know, adding staff, adding, you know, more clients on? What are some of the things that you have in mind for your like forecast in terms of planning and how you build it out? Well, you know, I'll I'll, I'll mention it's it's a really challenging time with uh, coronavirus going on. So we're all being challenged with thinking differently um, sure. about, you know, what does the future hold? What are the, the, the core needs, right? And, and, and if you look at TAP, um, yes, we have solutions. Yes, we have technology. But I'm not uh, – we're really not to sell a widget to someone. We're mm-hmm. really out there to understand what their challenges are. What are their problems? Again, in our uh, analogy, what are your manual efforts and spreadsheets and messes? And by the way, those exist in every organization, all sizes even though we're focused on the SMB market. So we're really, you know, I'm challenging my team to think about, hey, what are the current challenges? What are you know, people working from home? Uh, how do people collaborate more? Um, you know, when they have a spreadsheet that they're trying to email back and forth. You know, so we're looking for those messes and really trying to bring to the table solutions um, that, can, that can eliminate those. If you look at what we do, yes, it's some pre-built tools, but it is it does have a flavor of customization or configuration mm-hmm. um, based on the current uh, client issues. 
What do you what do you find as some of those like low hanging? And obviously, it's going to change, right? Based off of client, based off of the way they built their own, based off what they're doing internally, size of company, how long they've been around. I mean, obviously, there's a, a ton of variations. But what do you think are some of the low hanging fruit like right now that business owners out there um, should be considering um, in their processes? Well, you know, if if they want to grow, I'll give you an example. One of our customers, <clears throat> we just ask. Again, it's a pretty standard question. Tell me about your manual efforts and spreadsheets. And they said, well, we're trying to grow our company, and, and we spend you know, eight hours a week um, going into this one system, and we run three extracts, and we pull that data into Excel. We go over here to QuickBooks, and we run an extract, and we try to combine that just to get a visibility into where our sales, marketing, and project management are. <laughs> right? And they spend eight hours a, a week do, doing that. <laughs> And so, you know, we, we hear that, and, of course, our, our wheels start turning. Mm-hmm. The solutions we come up with are not, I'll say, revolutionary. We're not creating the next iPhone, but we have the ability to leverage um, tools that, that a lot of people are using. We use some RPA. We use some ETL. We use some screens, uh, our standard screens, to capture data. But we come in in a short period of time, this one particular organization, within two or three weeks, we had integrated their core I'll call it an ERP, but it, it had sales, marketing, and project management, as well as their financial system, <clears throat> again, small, medium business. And we'd integrated that and given them a visibility that, you know, where they were getting data that was out of date, really wasn't accurate, mm-hmm. we were updating that every hour, and so they instantly wow. had it at their fingertips. So, you know, we see that, I actually call that TAPS AI, and and, and not artificial intelligence, but more mm-hmm. actionable information. So mm-hmm. the different, you know, acronym, but it's actionable information that they have at their fingertips. They can make decisions with whether it's, you know, hey, I need to go into this new market, or hey, I need to shift, and we don't need to do this product, but we need to use this product, right? Especially in today's world, we give mm-hmm. folks actionable information to do that. Yeah, those shifts are, are just have to be so much faster now. There's no more waiting like for the, you know, to the end of the quarter or then it went to the end of the month and then the end of the week. Now it's like you're making decisions potentially <laughs> depending on what business you're in daily. And if you're in advertising or marketing or MarTech or in any of those fields, you might be doing it hourly. Like Absolutely. it's so interesting how quick things are moving, and who knows? I'm not even I'm not even going to get into the machine learning guys. I don't even want to deal with that part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what they're doing? It they're doing it as I'm talking. I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> it's out of control at a different level. So, John, um, that being said, um, if somebody's listening to this, and first off, I can I can go on and on with this. I have 50 more questions for you, but we're about out of time. Um, that being said, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on TAP Innovations or to connect, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out? The best place to go is uh, to our webpage. Uh, it's www.tap, T-A-P is in Paul, I-N-N-O-V is in Victor.com. So, TAP and of. Dot com. We've got a wealth of information um, about TAP. We've got case studies. We've got some videos. We've got a lot of information there and, uh, and also ways to get in contact with us. Um, we've even, I'll add one more thing, we've even got a brand new um, survey. We call it a, a mess assessment survey that you can go within two minutes and assess your mess, your manual efforts and spreadsheets, and we provide you a, a very dynamic report. And that's awesome. Well, uh, thanks a lot for coming from the show. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Uh, if you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the comment section. I'd love to know what you're working on and uh, what kind of projects you have going on. And uh, thanks, again for coming back on the show.